Hi, I'm Linda. I'm Ed. The, the Dream, Dream Team. Team. We're coming to you today talking about cultivating relationships in real estate. You know, yeah. real estate is all about relationships. Oh, yes. Yeah, a lot of people don't think of it that way. You may think of housing or you think of just property acquisition. But real estate is truly about relationships. Oh, yeah. Just in one transaction, you have a minimum of 10 people that's involved. Yeah, you have buyer, seller, um, agents, title companies, movers, movers um, home inspectors, appraisers. Yeah, appraisers. So in one just one transaction, mm -hmm. you may have more than 10 people involved. Absolutely. So is real estate, um, relationships, is that important? Absolutely. It is. Absolutely it is. No, but today, you know, we're talking about, you know, different kind of relationships. Because the relationship may be between a husband and wife, or a mother and daughter, yeah. you know, a father and son, or friends. So there are all kind of real estate relationships with people that you work directly with. Yeah. And um, that's what we want to talk about today is those direct working relationships. Because really, if you think about it, when it comes to transactions, uh, when it comes to even wanting to buy something, sell something, uh, it's all about relationships. It's all about, okay, do you like that person? Mm -hmm. That person may be extremely smart, but mm -hmm. if he comes off to you in the wrong way, you may choose somebody else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because sometimes we've walked away from, you know, a uh, a, a home that they want to list, you know, and they ask us on the way out the door, by the way, uh, what company did you say that you're with? Yeah. Because they like us right. as a person. That's it was it. the relationship that was cultivated, you know, more so than the building or the home itself. Absolutely. Yeah, and so that's what we want to talk about, uh, how to build relationships, because mm -hmm. even with uh, my wife and I, when it comes to flipping homes, I mean, there's a lot of communication that's involved, Yeah, you know, and you have to talk about things, you know, mm -hmm. for example, with my wife, Linda, uh, we can walk in the house and I'm looking at, okay, all the stuff that I see that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. Linda's way past that. Mm -hmm. She hasn't seen how things could be done. And not only that, how we can list it and she's further down the line. So I know that about her. And so we have to communicate that with each other, mm -hmm. to each other. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we can reach that goal. Yeah, and it's all part of uh, the relationship of working together yes. as a husband and wife. And that's the relationship that we're going to delve into today. Absolutely. Is having a working relationship um, with your spouse, yeah. you know? Um, a lot of people have said, oh, I don't ever want to work with my spouse. I, c I couldn't stand <laughs> being with them all how day. How do you do it? <laughs> yeah, how do you do it? We get asked that all the yeah, time. That's true. You know, and we understand. Sometimes, you know, spouses argue and, they, yeah. you know, they be fighting and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so we understand, you know, why people ask that question. But personally, I wouldn't want to work with anybody other than my spouse. I love working with Ed, you know. So yeah. is it all roses all the time? No. Nah. Mm -mm. no. But, you know, really, relationships, period. You're going to have your ups and downs. That's part of life but you learn to give and take. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's yeah. that's it, and to communicate. Oh, absolutely. You no, know, that's a huge part of, you know, working together in real estate, you know, um, as husband and wife. Now, the nice thing about that is, for those of you that are married, you already know, um, you can give your husband a look and he'll know, oh, yes. don't do that. You know, that's, <laughs> that's not good, you know, or vice versa. We can communicate with each other it's not always verbal. Sometimes it's nonverbal communication. We just have to learn to listen to each yes. other, you know, see. So, and then the verbal communication too. It's oh, yeah. very necessary. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. And, and just like we talked about before, when it comes to working together and being able to know each other's strong points or weak points. I mean, I know when it comes to my wife, Linda, I mean, she can calm a person down. There's times when you have a client, they're so worried about what about this? What about that? What about that? And Linda just strokes the person mm -hmm. and she just ease that person and says, you don't worry about it. We'll take care of that. Mm -hmm. See, I know that about her based on my relationship with her. Mm -hmm. And so I know where to put her, mm -hmm. put her in a situation like that, that can ease the person. So know who you're working with yeah. and their strong points and weak points. Yeah, same here. You know, I know Ed, he can walk into a room, I don't care if it's a hundred folks, he can take them 
take him, you know, and, and all eyes will be on him. He's totally comfortable with that, you know. I'm a little more on the shy side. I used to be anyway, you know. <laughs> so that's not my strong point, I don't feel, you know. Um, but um, I know that about him. See, so whatever relationship that you um, cultivate, whether it be husband and wife or whoever you're working with, you have to know, recognize the person's strong point. And it's okay. It doesn't take anything away from you mm -hmm. because you have them. You know, you have your own strong points. They have theirs. Right. That's what makes the relationship a good working relationship. Because if you knew everything, you don't need anybody to work <laughs> That's with. That's true. <laughs> right? You ever work with somebody like that? No. They know everything. Nothing you have to say matters because they already know it all. That can help in, happen in a relationship with the husband and wife too. And believe me, when that happens, they're going to be problems. Oh yes, mm -hmm. no See? doubt about that. Yeah. So you have to trust, you know, each other as well. You know. Yes, and also to know why certain things affect you a certain way. You know, some people they maybe they feel like they need to have control over every decision. Well, they need to check or look within themselves. Why is that? Mm -hmm. You see, do I feel that if I relinquish some of that control, it takes something away from me? Mm -hmm. So when you understand yourself, mm -hmm. then it can help you when it comes to relationships. Mm -hmm. Or fear, you know, yes. maybe they have a fear of failure right. that keeps them from moving forward and making a decision, you yes. know, so they may stall a, a, a transaction or mm -hmm. stall a situation because they have a fear of failure, you know, or... You know, it, it could be pride, you know, or, you know, it could be a number of things, you know, a lack of communication, lack of trust. We talked about that, too. You know, so the funny thing is, does it sound familiar? <laughs> These are all things that come up in a relationship anyway right. between a husband and wife. Mm -hmm. See, so if we don't get it right at home, you're right. We're going to have a problem working together, too. See. So if we can get these things right at home, we just transfer those over to a working relationship. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. And and all of it centers around communication. See, understand, you know, I noticed that when I said this, uh, you responded this way. Why is that? Mm -hmm. See, now insight allows you to understand why a person reacts a certain way. And now you can address that problem calmly. Mm -hmm. See, you don't take it personal. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You know, because um, we both have trigger points, and we know that. Mm -hmm. We may not know when we push the trigger point until we see their face. <laughs> yeah. like, well, because I know him. When he's mad, he talks even calmer. He's very methodical and says, no, I think we need to do it. So I know already. I'm like, okay, you know what? I better lay off there. You know, so um, we know each other. We're husband and wife. We're yeah. spouse, you know, and for 34 years now nice. for us, right. you know, certainly you get to know each other, you know, but uh, it takes time. Yes. You know, it takes practice, it takes communication, you know, but man, you can have a working relationship with your spouse that's, that's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And especially, it's kind of, you see how you're working together, but also you can see you start a project together. For example, we flipped, just finished flipping a home. Mm -hmm. And when we first started that home, that home was a mess, mm -hmm. but we both came together you know, Linda would say, well, maybe we can do it this way. And I thought, oh, maybe we can do it this way. And we brought the two together. Mm -hmm. And then to see the finished product, it strengthens the relationship. It does. See? Mm -hmm. So learn to work together. Don't look mm -hmm. at problems as uh, just give up. No, if there's a problem, there's a there's solution. A solution. Yeah. Yeah, and the solution lies within both of you. Absolutely. You know, because you're in the same boat. Mm -hmm. You can't be paddling north and they paddling south and expect right. to get to the same destination. That's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. And believe me, I've taken the paddle before. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but that's not going to work. You know, you have to learn to paddle in the same direction. Yes. It's not always going to be smooth. There are going to be rough patches, rough waters. Right. You know, but that's life. Yes. You know, things come up. Things that are unexpected, right. they come up. come up. You know, same thing in the marriage, oh, right? Yeah. Absolutely. You know? Things, they come up. Mm -hmm. They come up. But it's like those words you said, for better and for worse. That's it. Exactly. See, yeah. so some unexpected thing might be you get pregnant. You know, that person happened. might get pregnant. That you know, with the territory. Yeah. Or, you know, they, they may have health issues. Right. You know, lose a job. Yes. All those things come up. What do you do? You don't bail out the boat. Yeah. 
You don't point at each other and tear the house down further. No. no, that's not how you make this thing work. Now you're working together for solutions. Yes, sir. See, that's that's the goal. Is there's a problem? There's a solution. And that's the way we handle life as right. well as real estate transactions. You know. But we try to try to work together and see some of those solutions before we get into them. You know, we, we both talked about um, Marcus Limonis. Maybe you all have seen him. He is the one um, that's the prophet, that, that show called The Prophet. You know, we've taken some advice from him. He said three things to look at before delving into a transaction. The people, the process, and the product. You know, so we kind of take that you know, and, and run with that, you know? So the people that we work with, they each other. Right. <laughs> yeah. I know this person, you know, mm -hmm. and he knows me. Yes. So I know I have a phenomenal uh, working relationship. I have a phenomenal person to work with, you yeah. know? Absolutely. And then with her, I know um, she's a go-getter. I mean, if it's to be found, she is going to find it. <laughs> you know, at first I, I'm like, <laughs> The answer is no. Yeah. And she's like, mm, well, let's find out why it's no. Mm. And got that from my mom. <laughs> <laughs> and that's good. You see, because if we both were the same, then how can we accomplish things? Yeah. So we bring the two together. So something that at first may be an irritant, look at it in a positive way, because now it can get you from one to two to three to four Absolutely. down the line. Absolutely. And, yes. you know, instead of, like you said, looking at it as a negative, you know, right. him being cautiously optimistic has caused us to count our cost right. way before we start putting the cost out, right. you know. So that brings us to the second P, the process, process. of how we determine if we're going to invest in this project right. is that we have a process, you know, what we purchase it for, how much goes into it, and what the net proceeds should be. And if they don't net us the percentage that we're looking for, we need to move on. Yes. This process is not working for this product. Yeah, and then sometimes when you mention that, it may come across, I know I may mention it to her, but have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? It may come across as I'm being negative. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but really it's just counting the cost. Yeah. Who build a house without sitting down first calculating how much it's going to cost? Absolutely, then that's when you end up in binds and yeah. you can't, finish the project we've been there before too oh, so you know so that's why we can give you this bought experience yes. and say to count the cost before going into a project you know and as a spouse you know working with each other we count the cost together now it's my on my end you know i'll put down the numbers and we go over them you know together so right. we can't both necessarily do the same job right. but we come together and make a decision together right. you know so um, you have to decide who's better at what, you know, who, who's going to be the best person to do this job. And that contributes highly to this relationship of working together as a spouse. Yes, and now that takes us to the third P, the product. See, when you look at a house, is this house worth it? Is it worth it? See, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you may have some attachments to it. Some people we meet, they're so attached to their house. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you have to see if the numbers match. Mm -hmm. That's the product. Yes. And so sometimes you got to throw emotion out of the game and make a decision, mm -hmm. a business decision Absolutely. and take emotion out. And, no, and, and you know, ladies, we can get emotional, can't yeah. we? I know I can. I love nostalgic older homes. I love them. But sometimes they are the, the money guzzlers, you know? <laughs> and I know that now, you know, so we have to not be so emotional about right. the product that we forget the process or we throw the process out the window that doesn't work we have to actually look at the process and the product and then come Absolutely. to a conclusion but all of that has to do with communicating yes it has to do with throwing pride out the window right. you know it has to do with you know um not feeling like you have to control this situation no matter what mm -hmm. that doesn't work it doesn't work in a marriage and it doesn't work in a real estate transaction you have to let that go Mm -hmm. Yes. So those are the three, you know, piece. Thank you, Marcus Limonis. We appreciate that. Yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> that help. But you know, those are the 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 things that are involved in working together as a couple. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we hope this was very helpful to you. And um, at the end of this video, we'll have some more helpful tips of how you can, you know, get into real estate. You can work together. You know, things that you can do. Um, 
Uh, so you can contact us. So, nice. Yeah, thank you so much. If you enjoy what you learned, then subscribe, you know, and tune in next time because um, we'll bring you more, you know, information Almost about relationships. Yeah, relationship, working together in real estate relationships, mothers and daughters, you know, husbands, wives, sons and fathers, friends, friends. <laughs> yeah, so absolutely. Okay. Well, thanks again, and we'll see you soon. Bye bye. Thank you.